No, no, I get it. I'm also getting the sound. They lost David. It looks like it's coming back. That didn't work. Okay. Uh, no, Mr. Watson today, I take it? I have uh, Mr. Foster. All right. Uh, is everybody ready? I heard we're recording. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Then I will call to order the Greenwood Redevelopment Commission on this, the 13th day of June of 2023. May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Campbell? Here. Mr. Harris? Present. Mr. Hopper? Here. Mr. Hooper? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Or Mr. Moan? Here. And let the record show non voting advisor, Mr. Alexander, is asking. All right, for the record, I am uh, virtual today and the rest of the members are in person. Uh, so I guess that means we'll need a roll call for everything. Sorry, Mr. Hoover. Right. Um, I will go ahead and turn over the meeting uh, to Mr. Hoover to take it from here. I think it's easier for somebody in person to do it. So the floor is yours, sir. Yes, thank you. Uh, first thing on our agenda now is our approval of minutes of our regular meeting of May 9, 2023. Any uh, comments, from Mr. Members of the commission or corrections addition to the recent staff. Hearing none, can we have a roll call to motion. I'll motion. I'll motion. I'll second. You motion. I'll motion. motion. Okay, I'll second. Yeah. Now roll call. Uh, Mr. Harris? Uh, aye. Mr. Hopper? Aye. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Mr. Moan? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Motion passes by the left. Um, under new business, we have a Riverfront District application, SIP on Main LLC. Gentlemen, here, or yes, please. Good evening. Introduce Good evening. yourselves. And... Thank you. My name is Rick Payne. We, uh, we're applying for the Riverfront license there, like the 250 West Main. Um, SIP cocktail lounge. It's going to be an upscale, kind of a uh, little small, quaint place. A little bit about myself. I've been in the hospitality industry since 1987. We've developed over 16 different restaurants and bars throughout Indianapolis, Kentucky, Michigan, and Nashville, Tennessee. We had some places here around called McGillivray's Pub and Eateries many years ago. And then we had some stores in Broad Ripple, Eaton Dance Club for many, many years. We currently own and operate the Wild Beaver Saloons, which is one downtown and also in Nashville. And also, we uh, own and operate, it's called Burnside Inn. It's a 314 Mass Avenue there next to Stout Shoes. It's a three level, small, quaint, the live music. So, we're looking to hopefully put this nice little place there into the domain. Uh, do some business. This is my partner, Dan Slater. Dan Slater. He's been in the business for many, many years, yeah, also. About, about, about 30 years, years experience. Uh, we both worked pretty good on putting the concept together. We thought it would be pretty good for old town and we want to kind of be a part of. I know it's kind of a newer developing area, so we're excited to be on the front end of that. We'd like to be pretty instrumental in setting a good precedent for places maybe that come in now and coming after us and just a good quality establishment that fits in well with, with the area down here. The application looks like you both going to be heavily involved in the operation. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Questions for the gentleman? I love how green was developing. My wife had a nail salon across the street there for 20 years, nail going down. And I, I painted that building 30 times next to the car place. And I was always like, wow, we need to do something tomorrow, man. This town. And uh, that's it, excites me. I, I, the, so help me out. You are exactly where on Main Street, where is 250? It's in the Columns building. Okay. It's, it's oh we're, we're just taking the first floor, okay. which is approximately 18 to 2,000 square feet. It's going to be a smaller place, but okay. I think it could be good. Thank you. We get a little outside seating there, and then in the back, our, our landlord is Mike Holcraft. Uh, he's got some property around there. He's got Hoosier Brewing. And, uh, so he's got, he acts like he has a mission there for a little bit of that area. Then you have across the street Revelry, which is doing well. So we feel that we feel a little fit right there. Okay. Any other questions from the commission? This is the first time we've been a tourist. 
Uh, in short, we need to approve the application and, and uh, recommend that the mayor's office complete the process and go to the state reformulation recommendation. Is there such a motion? I'll motion that. For a second? I'll second that. Okay. Further discussion? Mr. Hopper? Aye. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Mr. Moan? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Nay. Mr. Harris? Aye. Okay, motion passes four to one. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Like one quick question. So the, the protocol, will you take it to the state? What, what's our next move? Should we wait to hear back from Stephen Hoover? It, it'll go to the mayor's office, and the mayor will, the mayor's office will forward it on. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'll be in contact with you after the mayor's office. Okay, great. Which okay. I've been emailing with. Yes, yes. Yep, gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next on our agenda is resolution 1 24 0303, a resolution approving an application for property tax deduction for certain real property located within the Greenland East Side Economic Development Area, Gateway Associates LLC. Sherman is representing on this matter. Good evening, Pat. Good evening. Uh, Pat Sherman, Compass Point CPA is representing Gateway uh, Park Building 2, LLC. That's a, uh, uh, you have all this material in your packet. This is a, a building, a 28,008 square foot building. Uh, it's on Emerson Avenue. It's, it's just identical to the building just south of that. Uh, it's uh, right in front of the uh, the most right behind it. So uh, this is a request for 10-year abatement. Uh, this is a Greg Allen building. Uh, we also the building right next to it. Uh, we've uh, requested that we would start uh, June 1st, a little bit behind on that, but that's uh, handled with weather. But for Stephen, we will uh, Thanks for that, like December 31st of the So it's a fast track. So it's a speculative building right now. But we don't have any uh, tenants that are lined up for that building, but there's certainly some um, demand in that area for that type of so for, There's some medical office space in the other building that was uh, recently rented. So it, it has good occupancy. Was it like the Sherman Bush? Is that the goal for this one? That, that, that type of occupancy? Yes. Yes. Office. And there's some renderings in there. It's it's built for all the space like that. Lots of new things. So, so you're, what do you think the anticipated? Job creation would be if it gets fully leased. Yeah, that's that, that's a great question. We, we expect it's going to be similar to the one that's next to it, but like there's some imaging in there that don't have a lot of employees, but they're well compensated. So that gets to be difficult. We're going to aspire looked at moving into that building and going to that building at 65 with many more employees. So, uh, you know, we're, we're anticipating. Uh, 93 that should be in that building. Uh, that's, that's a spec, so it's an anticipation, but we, we do expect the, the wages to be 1950, but we expect that. Thank you. Other questions, Mr. Sherman? It's a pleasure of the commission with respect to resolution 2023 ask the sir. Second. Okay. Mr. second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Hearing that all in favor, give me roll call, please. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Mr. Mone? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. Harris? Aye. Mr. Hopper? Aye. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Pat. 
Next on the agenda is resolution number 2023-04, resolution declaring an intent to reimburse the city of Greenwood for expenditures of the city for the construction of public road site and select infrastructure work at US 31 and North School Road. Mr. Stern, please. Thank you. And uh, the two items I have actually relates to both 2023 and 2004 resolution 2023-04. 20, um, so these both have to do with infrastructure project agreements relative to projects that the Board of Public Works is agreements the Board of Public Works is already approved. Um, these are both uh, our future RDC reimbursement resolutions, uh, similar to the access road that Horseville Road entered into with the uh, cumulative capital development fund years ago. The, uh, so they have been approved from a project stream standpoint, there are approved public works projects and the reimbursements would be subject to the allocation areas uh, subsequently being created uh, and having a TIF generated to make the reimbursements. Questions for Mr. Stern regarding either one of these? Yeah, okay, I'll just disclose from um, the get go here that this resolution relates to a transaction uh, in which I represent the property owner and so therefore I can't participate in this uh, consideration of this. Resolution of four. Yes. Let's do these individually. What's the uh, pleasure of the commission with respect to the resolution of the 2023-04? The motion to approve this. I motion to approve. Okay, Mr. Harris. Second by Mr. Mellon. Further discussion? Very now, in favor. Very now. Bad habit to break. Roll call, please. Mr. Mellon? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. Harris? Aye. Mr. Hopper? Aye. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Now let's do 2023 05. No motion. Motion by Mr. Harris? Second. Second by Mr. Campbell. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. Harris? Aye. Mr. Hopper? Aye. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Mr. Mount? Aye. Thank you, motion passes by vote. Thank you, Adam. Very good. Thank you. We'll, we'll prepare the documents to be back uh, with the summer with the allocation terms. Yeah, great. Thank you. Let's see anything on our agenda under old business? But under the capital project report, market plaza improvements, PSA amendment number one, GAI consultants, finance. Good afternoon, Kevin. Good afternoon, Jim. How are you? Um, this is for uh, market plaza design. Uh, we've been working on that. Uh, there's a few changes to the uh, initial design contract now that we've done survey and uh, located utilities um, and uh, would provide us with some more uh, thorough design to get that project out. We're looking to hopefully uh, do that in 2024. Um, the key part of that is to add sidewalks on both sides of Market Plaza. Uh, if you're down here in the summer, uh, it can be pretty, pretty uh, perilous trying to get from the uh, city park of Madison over to uh, Splash Pad. So this total is a increase of uh, $44,780 to that design uh, paid for from the uh, central tip. Questions for Kevin? What's the amount on this? Uh, after the forty-four thousand seven hundred eighty. Uh, no, it's just it's forty-four thousand seven hundred eighty. Questions? And that's in, in addition to the amount we've already. Yeah, and part of the change on this too is bringing the sidewalk and feedback from the owners, bringing the sidewalk up right in front of Giacomo's and then you'll have pull-in parking kind of like on Massachusetts Avenue. So instead of having a sidewalk that walls off 
people in parking from Napa and Giacomo side walk will come in up against their building and then jump back up. So you still have full in parking in front of Napa and Giacomo. We spent time over the last year talking with, with those guys. And, uh, it's a little design change, but uh, it seems to work for pedestrians and then need to have uh, deliveries uh, from Napa and uh, carry out pizza for. Uh, Mr. Harris and all those little town residents. That's true for everybody. I've got it too. Other questions? Action you wish to take on this uh, amendment? A motion to approve. A motion to approve. A second. Second by Mr. Harris. Roll call, please. Mr. Harris. Aye. Mr. Hopper. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Mr. Rohn? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Motion passes by three. Next, uh, give us the sticker for Worcester Road Sports Park Project. Contact the business services and might yeah. structures. structure. Thank you. Is it the GSP final specs? This is a um, shade structure, uh, 16 by 16, uh, for the uh, Greenwood Sports Park. We came with the Horse Hill Road cash on hand. Uh, there's a rough design of it. Uh, part of what we're trying to do with parks now is have shade areas, uh, playgrounds, and other amenities. Uh, obviously, that park would be brand new. It's you've been down to the church there, the Clark Pleasant School, pretty wide open. So, to add a little shade to that park that's being built, total of $14,875. Uh, that's installed, right? No, that is the product of the product. install cost and the initial cost. Okay, so the install cost is, is in the con contract we've already done. So. Uh, $14,875 at the worst of the road. Was there seven of them? Uh, yeah. No, those are just the oh, options that he could have done. This is that this is just the cut sheet. He, this is one 16 by 16. Yeah. So we can do some relevance where it'll be on side. It'll be between the splash pad and the actual play equipment. On the north side, I'd like to harvest back the line. Harvest Bible Baptist and Greenwood Station. The two um, all that complexes. <coughs> Questions for Tiger? Five minutes. Pleasure to commission. I guess my question is how is the, this is just my brain, how is the install part of the original cost, but the uh, way it was bid? Pardon, it's it was the way it was okay. bid. It had all the concrete work it was already in the initial bid, so it just made uh, it made mobilization of material cost sense to include that in the initial bid. Okay. So you knew you wanted one, you just didn't have one. That yeah. Correct. Okay. So it could somehow be put down into the yeah. I'll put a solitude bed, you know, so they're not right. I'll put a solitude bed. They'll build around that once they're ready for it. So okay. Is that, is that canvas that I'm saying? It's the same material as you see at City Center Park, King okay. Center. It's those now pretty far from pickleball courts as well. Yeah. It's that kind of synthetic right. uh, yeah. material. When's the City Center Park held up for Oh gosh. Five years. Uh, five years? Yeah, it's probably more than that. Yeah. It's been five or six years we've been yeah. in the planes. Yeah. 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 And the bees come down in the winter. That's that's a really good question. They do not. Um, they we were kind of quite scared on these here when we got a snow load after the first year, and they were sagging. And I was on the phone with the manufacturers, and they said, "It's completely fine. We'll come back." And they keep them up all year round in Canada. They don't leave them down. Okay. Further questions? Is there a motion to approve this contract? Make a motion. I'll send them. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Hearing none, no call, please. Aye. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Mr. Moan? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. Harris? Aye. Motion passes 5 0. I'm sorry, Kevin, what 
the typical that we paid out of? Horsehill Road cash. Oh, okay. So that's sure. Horsehill Road surplus, I guess. On to the next item on science for various major locations. Yeah, so a little bit of this work uh, was done, and we were basically going to have a different contract, but we also got the opportunity to partner with um, Restore Hotel Greenwood. They got a, uh, I can't remember if they got a grant or if they just paid for it out of donations. They purchased a two signs talking about the residential and business districts in Greenwood, the historical residential and business districts. This is a big, nice, one you see a couple of them in Greenwood, um, but they'll really kind of add to the uh, placemaking. We plan to put one of them at, uh, they paid for the plaques, we're paying for the design and the pole, and are helping with their location. One would go at the um, Wake Up Lot, this is what we sometimes call it, right next to uh, Rio Villa, uh, that tells the story of the residential, uh, it's kind of that's the north line. Um, and that district goes out on Main Street as well east and west and so the other spot we put it with the um and it'll pull off a little up would be in the uh the grass areas around old city park parking lot that's on the north uh right there by what was the bonds uh and the chin baptist church so that if you get in your car you get out and be able to read about when they built mr harris's house how cool old town right it is Franklin's got a separate We've got a couple other ones uh, around here with the Cold Cannon Company, um, et cetera. So, kind of a cool place making. Uh, and it's those, uh, we partnered with Store Town Green with, again, I can't remember if it was a grant where they bought the actual uh, metal signs or we're doing the poles and they sold. $6,815. So, that'd be Central TIF or Old Town TIF. That's for all of those. Yeah, yeah. The primary cost on that, they did a little refurbishing of the other ones. Uh, Mark Richards actually volunteered and painted them up a couple years ago, uh, but they kind of cleaned them all up to look uniform. But then the main one is putting in two big holes and installing in concrete the uh, the two new guys that the school of country would purchase. What's the uh, external contribution to this? Security? Whatever the cost of those two metal um, bronze. Historical plaques are. Rob knows better than me, but I would think it was albums, probably. Oh. Yeah. Other questions? For a motion for approval. So moved. Mr. Campbell? Second. Mr. Harris. Roll call, please. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Mr. Mo? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. Harris? Aye. Mr. Hopper? Aye. Motion passes by zero. <clears throat> Next, Main Street, Madison Avenue, streetscapes. So, uh, this is a, is this the professional services or the? Uh, Let's see the change order first. The change order. Um, this is a combination of many change orders uh, from last year. If you recall, uh, the city of the Redevelopment Commission lost, uh, depending on how you look at it, 90 days um, due to the water companies. Um, inability to meet their schedule that they agreed to on Main Street and their um, incorrect uh, marking and belief in where their Madison Avenue line was. They, they repeatedly said it was in the center of the street. It was um, actually over by the sidewalk by Grafton Peak and Hoosier Brewing, which then necessitated cooperation with Duke to hold their transmission poles and a variety of delays, hence that section of streetscape going into a second season. Um, the majority of this change order, $165,500, is cost directly attributed to those delays. It is our intent to uh, bill Indiana American Water um, for these charges um, and to ensure uh, the future of individuals with Mr. Foster's office may, may follow up with this at, at the well, it works. Um, the actual change order, which is because the whole thing up, uploaded, mm -hmm. which is I think 238 pages. So we kept very good records as well as the contractors on the delays, hours, force accounts, uh, and positions uh, due to the um, uh, inability of the water company to perform their work on time. Um, 
two other parts of this change order, the plan to reach out to the board works for uh, board work asked to be done by the sanitary and um, stormwater utilities to learn about 50,000. Um, since the street was open, uh, we, we uh, collaborate and work with, saw advice from how do we fix this? Not really safe. So um, the aggregate change over is 316,000, um, $162.91 um, with um, the plan to build, to, uh, uh, build 165 of that back to the water company and 50, roughly 50,000 of that, 49,000 directly attributable to our utilities. So uh, hopefully not aggregate that much, uh, but that is um, uh, change order, uh, is it two? Three. three. Change order three. So we've so had a much better summer uh, this year than the last. So the total is 316.162.91 yes. for this one. And you would seek reimbursement for roughly 49,000 and another the, Yeah, and yeah. the reason that we want to do that now is um, one, to be incredibly uh, transparent. The water company does not know where their main street line is that was put in last summer. And two, um, the, um, there's significantly more utility work that the sanitary sewer has asked us to do this summer. Okay. Any questions, Kevin? Mm -hmm. Could you repeat again what this change order is, the total amount of this change order? Yeah, the total amount of this change order, $316,000. $162.91 gross, and then we hope to be able to uh, recapture for the RGC uh, over 200000 back between our own utilities and what we will um, present to any other I, uh, I tried to modify the document so you could open it, but seeing how you weren't able to, I will just put the first page where Kevin has it. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I knew it was so it is 238 pages, but um, yeah. we knew. We had to have our evidence. Uh, I thought I'd gotten the document size small enough. So. Further questions, Kevin? Well, what are the uh, what are the chances you think of getting reimbursed? We have sent bills from last summer as part of the other ones to the water company. I believe they paid one of them, um, but uh, I think with Mr. Hodson on board, all things are possible. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Further questions? Yeah, motion to approve this change order. On motion. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. Harris? Aye. Mr. Hopper? Aye. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Motion passes 5 0. The PSA amendment number 5, I think it is. Yes, uh, this is to uh, the uh, Brenda Lawrenceberger Associate uh, Professional Service Contract. Primarily, this is for uh, construction administration. Remember, we're doing the inspection in-house, so we don't have a big inspection bill, but we are asking a lot of the architecture and engineers. Um, part of this is also because the project ran longer, so there's been more visits. Part of it has been the complexity of what we found under the ground. And on a positive side, we've gotten a lot of agreement from the business owners and whatnot to design and look at running um, decorative lighting across the street on Main Street. If you notice, we actually got rid of all the utility poles from Main Street. Uh, there are no utility poles on Main Street. So that gives us the opportunity to run kind of like, uh, they have at Bottle Works, there's an area in Greencastle that they have it. There's an alley, a smaller version of Franklin that they have where they ran lighting back and forth. And so if you're going from, uh, the, what was it called? Six or whatever it was here. You go across the reverie and it would be illuminated for pedestrians approximately seven to eight to be in the air uh, between both the lights and potentially the um, building owners, many of which are new since we designed this project. Um, some of you may remember first went to bid in February of 2020, opening in March of 2020, and obviously we did not award the contract as. If the RDC, yeah, uh, that virtually that time, or at least started to. And the compensation for this is thirty-five thousand one hundred seventy-five dollars. Correct. Yes, and it outlines it. 
question, additional question for Kevin. So motion to approve this PSA amendment number five. It's just split between the central and eastern east tip. Thank you, Mr. Brown. A second. Roll call, please. Mr. Campbell. Aye. Mr. Harris. Aye. Mr. Hopper. Aye. Hi. Mr. Mount. Hi. Hi. Okay, we will probably a tight team for Freedom Park Pickleball Complex. Yes. Uh, it's So this um you can transport yourself, you've been in old town for a while, all these projects to um Freedom Springs. Uh, Park. And if you imagine uh, if you're by the pump house, the Laser River, if you've been up there um, on the north side of the pool complex, going up towards one of the original um, parking lots, which is that half ellipse, for lack of a better phrase, that you see in white or in white up there. Um, this proposed facility would be south of that north of the pool and in fact if you squint really hard you can see that thing that says pump house on uh the very bottom of the um uh, drawing and that is where that uh wood sided uh pump house is uh that is on the north side of the pool complex um and what we we're proposing um is a destination uh pickleball uh, complex to be uh, funded potentially partially by the RDC uh, or part by the RDC. It would be 16 uh, regulation right around pickleball courts um, with a um, variety of uh, amenity shade structures and uh, uh, lighting potentially based on bids and uh, funding sources. Uh, the the story also includes a substantial addition of parking. Uh, that is the gray shaded uh, second half or second two thirds of the, we'll call it an ellipse or the um, kind of piece of a circle uh, that is up there. It is a total of how many spaces? It's 120 additional spaces. Which will benefit both the pickleball and Freedom Springs on peak days, which seem to be happening more and more often these days. Um, and what we are asking uh, for you all is to essentially allow us to go bid it. There's no ask today, but just to let us bid it and introduce it to you all and come back next week, next uh, month, hopefully with some cost. And when we do that, um, we will also share with some other funding sources, between parks, parking tech, and some potential uh, grant funding um, that will make a collaborative project um, for this new um, 
destination that will also allow for um, coordinated tournaments. Uh, and that is one of the big things from this. There's any questions, Rob, or I can um, so the aisle between the upper and lower, the north and south, towards that look like uh, canopies again. Yep, that's a great question. So we're kind of labeling that or pointing that as a concourse in between the courts, um, and that is going to be covered with eight twenty by twenty, or proposed to be covered by eight twenty by twenty shape structures that we're familiar with now, um, and it gives the player, the user, some relief to the sign. And also a uh, nice area to host the stage for tournaments and plays and uh, set up brackets and things like that. Stuff going at Craig Park and doing things. The stuff going at Craig Park on the pickleball court. Yeah. Yeah. And so part of the advantages of why here, um, Craig Park's obviously um, kind of built out. The biggest thing is, is we, we talked about utility coordination and its frustrations in previous projects. Um, we have utilities here, not saying there won't be issues, but the what Freedom Springs obviously has the ample water service to run a drinking fountain, ample power at that pool house to run a couple more lights. So it's not like the sports park where we're going out into a farm field and are waiting, you know. Um, years for new power service. And here really does give a, a good perspective, although uh, I believe this is a little old, right? Because you expanded parking into that initial, yeah. So this is this is one parking expansion ago. One Google. Uh, I will. Uh, and um, um, you can see we filled up the parking in that uh, green island that appears to have kind of a um, uh, well, it shows that it's parking interesting. Obviously, it shows the little Google traffic idle ways to parking, but not the actual updated imagery. And then um, it uh, uh, the trail will be moved and reconnected, correct, Rob? Yep, everything will be compensated um, or adjusted for the addition as far as trail network, um, the parking lot, uh, you know, all of them adjusted. Additional restroom facilities. So we have we have thought of that. So we've used we've used that as a placeholder for now, meaning that um, we'll have we have an idea of where sanitation can go in and water hookup can go in or restroom in the future. Uh, but keep in mind the existing restrooms that are out there now are not that far of a walk from where this is. It's, it's actually quite and it's connected quite well when we design of how we realign those trails. Yeah, they're uh, actually close down to where you see that playground uh, pop up in the bottom left, right? Okay, they're by that yeah, playground. Yeah, it's just southeast of that playground. And the funding source would be from which tip districts? Uh, the funding source can actually be due to amendments to just from any of uh, the districts, which all allow for kind of destination parks, communities. Uh, we'll have a better idea when we get bids in. Like I said, also the Parks Department is planning internally on contributing a significant amount. We also have uh, two potential grant sources, uh, one's an entitlement, the other is, is competitive uh, for this. And we plan to present um, present uh, a funding sources and uses for this at the, um, the, the next meeting. Obviously, we anticipate it. Uh, uh, being a cost that you know is over a million, um, but I not necessarily all know to see and not um, wanting to tip my hand as to what we actually have um, internally thought about with uh, space up there. I didn't make it more attractive with some indoor tennis courts. What's that? Said you might even make it more attractive with some indoor tennis courts. Is that right? Oh, Mr. Hobson, right. I, I, those, so. <laughs> I too uh, love tennis, but unfortunately, I have something that you could nail to this player. And never tennis. Yeah, that's fair. Ronald Brady. Yeah, he can't hit it. Yeah. Other questions for Taylor and Rob? I think this is just the first introduction. Correct. So, it is an overview. Uh, we've got work to do. Hopefully, we get a bid packet out. Get 
review it, get the bids back in by the next meeting. Uh, it's a goal, you don't have to put anything after that and uh, have plenty more information. So this, this was the overview, and this is more about the um, statute to make sure we're on the rules. And I think, because I know there's always a question about first meeting, second meeting. So once you bring the bids, then that would be the first meeting on the no, thoughts, or? No, we, we, that would yeah. hopefully be the second meeting as we notified you that it would be, there's no vote at the first one. It's just if you're gonna take an action that is not a tax abatement, that is over $100,000, it needs to be presented and talked about so the public are aware of it. By our, our own rules, not any sort of state statute. Uh, and then I can vote on the second. So, this is kind of your introduction. So, my question was related to not having the, the costs. Correct. Right. So it, it, I don't know if that was. So, we might have that next meeting. Yeah, oh, you should have a next meeting with actual bid. I, 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 I will definitely be a, a seven digit investment, um, but I don't want to get more granular than that because. That is one of the parallel or one of the perils of having an issue investment and getting sharing it publicly so everyone knows how what to do. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next on our agenda is our monthly financial report. Mr. Hudson, Capital Corporation Council. I think this one. Right. I think we're going to control us. At the same time, we broke this thing. Mark, good afternoon. How are you all? Uh, I have three items tonight for consideration. Uh, the First is on Orso Road Section 2. It's a right of entry agreement for Greenwood Christian Academy. Uh, Amanda has also prepared the list offer sheet. Uh, our original design on, on this, Orso Road Section 2, which you know is well under construction, uh, was a series of dry detention ponds on the north side of the road uh, towards the east side of the project north of the Greenwood Christian Academy. We've encountered a number of conflicts during construction out there. A bunch of utilities are in the way. Uh, we, we determined the best course of action would likely be to just combine the proposed series of ponds into one larger pond uh, and place it on the leftover triangle cutoff piece that PCA will retain. Um, in order to do this, we'd like it to be a permanent right of way owned by the city so that we can maintain it. So we need to acquire some additional property and right of way from the Christian Academy. We've met with them, we've talked with them about it. They're on, on board with this idea, they're open to the idea. Uh, in order to keep the project on schedule, we are going to obtain a right of entry from them first, which will allow us to go onto the property to build the pond. Um, we complete the roadway project and then complete the full appraisal and purchase the permanent right of way from them. So um, what I have before you tonight is the right of entry agreement. Part of that agreement is we're also offering them 10% uh, of the anticipated appraisal price, which is $3,737. Uh, yeah, do you have questions on that? Questions for Mark? Can you explain that again? That, that last part that you just talked about, the 10% we were talking about. So it's a, a good faith payment, put down 10% of the anticipated total price. We have a generally good idea what the price is for that total parcel because we've already bought right away from that parcel for Greenwood Christian. $37,000, right? Yes, correct. So the offer is, you have a misunderstanding, but you, I'm looking at the list offer price. So we're not, 3, we're not purchasing permanent right away today. If the $3,700 is a down payment to obtain the right of entry from that. This is effectively, if I understand correctly, just purchasing the right of entry? Correct, which allows to build the pond and allow to purchase the property as permanent right away. So we apply to the Yeah, it would be the 90%. Yes, yeah, so that 10% would be taken off the final price. We weren't. Sure, if you wanted to see that list entry sheet, so we prepared it uh, to make sure we had it ready to go. So we have the right entry agreement in front of us. So, further questions? I don't have a question, but I'm going to have to recuse because I was served on the board there and my two children went to school there. Just for the record. Is there a motion to approve the right of entry agreement? I'll make that motion. Mr. Senate. 
Campbell. Excuse me, I think the meeting should also approve along with that this offer. Is that and part of the agreement? Yes, do you think that's the well, right it's two separate documents that you're signing off on? I would it's include it in the motion. Okay. Unless the purchase agreement expressly incorporates it and attaches it, I don't believe it does. Okay. Mr. Miller, yeah. I'd like to amend my motion to include approval of the approval of this Mr. offer. Mr. Campbell approves that one second. Okay. Further discussion? No. Uh, Mr. Roll Call, please. Mr. Hopper? Aye. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Mr. Mellon? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. I don't know record show Mr. Harris from you. So the motion passes 4 to 0 with one abstention. Okay. Mark, let's go to Smith Valley Road, Avery Road, Roundabout. Uh, I have another item on uh, Stokes Crossing and Horseville Road. This is a consideration of contracts up to the number of the United. Uh, United was the private consultant on this project for the design. Uh, this supplement largely covers the, the work to prepare the right of entry document, the appraisal, and the buying for this work from GCA. But it would be best to proceed with them. They'll be able to use the same buying agent, the same appraiser. They had a lot of uh, the leg work done already. Uh, the supplemental agreement number four is for $10,932. Questions? Mr. St. John. Why is that motion to approve? Second. Thank you. Second, Mr. Campbell. Roll call, please, ma'am. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Mr. Rohn? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. Harris? I'll abstain. Yeah. And Mr. Hopper? Aye. Motion passes 4 to 0 with one abstention. Now we'll go to the roundabout. Now the roundabout. Smith Valley and Avery, um, as this uh, board is likely aware, we are designing a roundabout at the intersection of Smith Valley and Avery Road. Yeah. Um, our engineering consultant, Crossroad Engineers, is working to acquire the necessary right away. Uh, there's going to be six parcels we acquire right away from. We've secured right away from our first par parcel, which is parcel two, is in the northwest corner of the intersection. And I'm here today to ask for payment of that parcel in the amount of $27,656. So it has, this has a list offer sheet issue as well? That yes, it does. That is a grand pool of $27,656. Is, is that a full price? That's um, not an estimate. No, that's based off the appraisal and it's been accepted by the homeowner. Um, there was a, a settlement agreement that I took before the Board of Works as well, too. They wanted some trees planted, so there's a, a little extra money above the appraisal price that was approved by the Board of Works. So if there is a motion for approval, we can approve the list of offer of $27,656. Is there such a motion? Yes, I'll make that motion also. Thank you, Mr. Miller. I'll second. Second. Further, further discussion? Hearing none. Roll call, please, ma'am. Mr. Miller. Aye. Mr. Campbell. Aye. Mr. Harris. Aye. Mr. Hopper. Aye. Mr. McCarter. Aye. Mr. Hoover. Aye. Anything else, Mark? That was it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good evening. Just want to inform all of you, uh, Mr. Alexander is not going to be on the RDC anymore. The school board member is going to Greenwood School System. Uh, Chris Sebrowski will be starting the next week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Claims docket. We have in front of us claims totaling seven hundred eighty-two thousand three hundred ninety-nine dollars and forty-three cents. Motion to approve the claims docket. Second, Mr. Harris. Second by Mr. Campbell. Roll call, please, ma'am. Mr. Campbell. Aye. Mr. Harris. Aye. Mr. Hopper. Aye. Mr. Hoover. Aye. Mr. Michael. Aye. Thank you. Any other business that comes before the court? Before the court. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, he's supposed to say it right. Yeah, that's, that's the reason. Hearing that, uh, we'll stand adjourned at 5.20 p.m. Uh, before we have
Alright, uh, David, when are you back? Do you want to sign everything or do you want Mr. Hoover to sign today? Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. Okay. You want to come in and do it? Okay. Thank you all. Have a safe trip back, Dave. Thank you.